Magic at Hawks. Marco, who do you like and why? I like Orlando, and the reason I do is when a good team can win a game when they play bad, that is a very good sign. And Orlando played a poor game the other night against Atlanta, and they were still able to beat Atlanta. And I think this is going to weigh on the Atlanta Hawks. It's going to start creeping into their mind last year's playoffs. This team has been their nemesis. Orlando rolled them last year in the playoffs. During the regular season this year, Atlanta put a big emphasis on every game, and they, they played Orlando tough during the regular season. But they had a major opportunity uh, Tuesday night when they played. They had their foot on their throats and could have went, went up 2-0 in this series. They let Orlando get off the hook. Orlando shot just 34.6% from the field. Atlanta's had no answer for Dwight Howard, but everybody else they shut down or a case of bad shooting. The guards for Orlando, Jameer Nelson, 4 of 15 in the game. Jason Richardson was 3 of 12. And then the uh, shooting forward, Tarkaloo, only 4 of 16. They, those three guys combined for shooting less than 25% from the floor. So what was the deficiency on the Atlanta side? Was it poor shooting also? Atlanta just, they, when it got to crunch time, they, they couldn't make the plays. I mean, this is a team that when your opponent shoots the way Orlando did during this game, Atlanta should have been way ahead. They just, they, they weren't but, executing. But, but, but it's all relative, is if Orlando's shooting 36% and Atlanta's shooting 36%, then it's going to be a close game. So, well, let me ask another question, though. I, I, I understand the psychology of letting one get away and, and that potentially being negative, but what about the psychology of saying we split at Orlando? Well, most I mean, of they've got to be coming home enthused. You were talking about the Lakers Hornets game, and you had a great pick on the under in that. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is, you said one of the reasons that you would lean Lakers or why you don't why you didn't like the Hornets for sure, even though it was a uh, the, some places it was even minus twelve the Lakers come mm -hmm. game time was you said sometimes psychologically if the team wins the first game they let down in the second game because the split's all they want. Is, is, it, is Atlanta really coming home demoralized after a split? They're not totally demoralized, but they were so close to being 2-0. It's just because of the history they've had the last couple of years in the playoffs with Orlando, they've, they've met the Magic in the playoffs, and, the, and that's been the team that's ended their season every year. It's because of that history that I'm, I'm feeling this way. Because, hmm. all right, fair enough. So, let, so, so far what you're saying is you're playing the, the, the higher seed, the more marquee team on the road. Right away we know there's going to be a premium on that. And one of the reasons you're doing that is because you think there's going to be a, a demoralization on the part of Atlanta after losing game two. What other factors well, are there? What else I feel in here, I expect all those guys that I said had bad days shooting, I expect them to you know, come back to the norm. And the reason being, I think they're going to get even better open looks because Atlanta's going to be conscious of Dwight Howard and try to minimize him. And that effort of coming down and doubling down low is going to give these guys even more wide open looks outside. And once they start to hit a few outside, then Atlanta's going to be in serious trouble because now what do you do? You, you bring your defense back out to play tight and, you know, Jameer Nelson be in his face, or do you double down low on Dwight Howard? And even with Dwight Howard being the only guy that was scoring in these games, he scored 33 and 46 points in the two games. Now, Howard, it's been years that the experts have been saying, hey, if he can only get his offense going, if he can only get his crunch time scoring going, and it would seem he's clearly stepping up in these first two games. Now, that makes some sense to me, is if the rest of the team plays poorly, Howard's establishing himself. Now, if the rest of the team can just get up to average and Howard keep it up, now Atlanta's overmatched. Makes a little bit of sense. I also think we're going to get line value here because both we're going to get what, well, what we do got. I mean, we've got Orlando. The line opened at minus two. It's down to minus one and a half. The public is going to look at Atlanta and, and say, hey, they went, they played two games there. They won one of them. They played tight in the other game. They're coming back home. They should get the win at home. Whoa. I, I smell a bat. Uh -oh. so, so here's the bat. Okay. Is Sportsbook Spy at game time mm -hmm. will over 50% be on Atlanta? Yes or no? 50%? You look nervous. Uh, okay, yeah. All right. 
So you think that? Mm-hmm. Ooh, dog. All right, so how we'll much you bet? Whatever you want to bet, sir. All right, well, it's not. Let's do 300. Okay. All right, because I very much, and by the way, you can check that out if you don't know. at sportsbookspy.com. You get the bet percents on every game. Um it's, it seems like typically what you would say is you've got the better team that just needs to win. You do have that mentality with the line being what it is. I give you that. But, RJ, let's back up to the beginning of the playoffs. When all of the pundits, the talking heads like you like to call them and, and so forth, the guys on ESPN, when everybody was running down their teams in the playoffs, in the East, it was the Bulls, it was the Heat with the big three, then the next team is Boston, but everybody was bad in Boston because since they traded Perkins, they don't have the depth that they had. They're old. They didn't play well down the final month of the season. And then they get to the, the fourth team, Orlando. Orlando, nobody's giving them any shot to make a real run this year. They're, they, have, they still have them below Boston, and, and most people don't like Boston this year. So I don't think there's that emphasis on Orlando this year than you've had in the past years. I think relatively it's less, clearly more than Atlanta. Clearly more than Atlanta, but remember, Atlanta I'll handled them. I'll let you buy out of your bet for no, $100. Atlanta handled them during the regular season, so people are going to expect them coming back home that they're going to be able to win at home. All right. You know, speaking of the Celtics, um, on Fridays typically on Today in Sports Betting, a podcast, and you can get that at pregamepodcast.com, is Vegas Runner shows. He had the Knicks, on, or excuse me, the Celtics on his underrated list. He does top five overrated, underrated every Tuesday in the forums, mm -hmm. and he had the Celtics underrated. I'm going to be very interested to talk to him about that because to me, the Celtics, it's been an ongoing conversation with different pros, is I think it's a team that if it gets very lucky, uh, or if it comes together, whatever you want to call it, they could win it. But they're also a team that could get knocked out in the first round, though it doesn't look, you know, two close games or 2-0. and oh. I think they're a high-variance team, uh, which maybe lends you to want to play them on a future, but not so much game-to-game. -game. Interesting conversation. Well, the one thing I'll say on that, 30 seconds on that topic, I would agree that Boston is underrated right now. People are not giving them any credit because... Kind of hard when you go 0-2 ATS to be underrated. I, I know, Jeb, but as far as to keep winning it, and now they're, you know, the line's going to be different in New York. Uh, in what know. way different? Well, because now they don't have to win and cover a big number. Now, if they win the game, they're going to cover. But that makes it sound like that a road team, it, that, that because it's always going to be, let's say, seven points different, eight points different, that it's better to play a team on the road. The di here's the difference why Boston has that intangible that in the opponent that are playing, the Knicks don't. When it gets to crunch time, these guys have the experience. They don't wilt under pressure. The Knicks have shown that both games, they had their opportunities to win those games. To me, the Knicks didn't execute, took ill-advised shots at the wrong time, and that's just a sign of inexperience, and that's something you cannot... Well, you make an interesting point is, is you can profile, and, and this happens in football all the time, certain teams, handicappers love to bat as 14-point dogs because they don't turn the ball over, they grind the clock, and then certain te a team like that, you never want to net, or not never, but you aren't inclined to lay 14 with them, yeah. no matter how relatively different the opponents are. The fact that you're saying that the Celtics are the type of team that will win the close games and the Knicks are the type of team that will lose the close games, I actually think that's a good point. And thus, to profile, are the Celtics the type that's going to blow out a team, laying six, seven, eight points? Probably not as much. So, but I do think it's dangerous to say, well, wait till they're on the road, because we all know the public plays road teams that are the superior team too much. I mean, the Magic are the perfect public spot here. It's the clearly better team that you're pretty much just batting to win, and, and that, that's a trap, I think, oftentimes. Oftentimes it is, but given the way the history of this year has gone with these teams, I'm not going that way. My last point, um, I rarely want to bet a team who I question their fortitude, their psychology, uh, or the psychology of their, their toughness might be the way to say it. And I look at this Atlanta team, and I just hear what the ESPN guys say. You know, they're quitting on their coach. There's all kind of turmoil. They're going to blow the team up after this year. 
So, you know, as much as I don't want to lay a questionable superior team as a road favor in the NBA, I'm not anxious to take Atlanta. So let me give, you can give your projection. I have Orlando winning 91-85. Okay. This is, uh, on the scale, I almost would want to buck you here, but because of the psychology. And I also have a wonderful bet at, at $300. Oh, man. <laughs> That's right. I'll let, all the way up until game day, I'll let you buy it out for, mm -hmm. let's make it 125 now, though. Okay. But I'm going to go mm -hmm. neutral on this one. Hey, stay on the fence. You can't get in trouble that way. <laughs> like, I'm not afraid to take a stand. Yeah. By the way, speaking of it, I've been... But following you, I've been red hot. But you've been hot even, you know, beyond that. Huh? Why don't you get? I know you've been fighting. Look into the camera and get it. <laughs> well, we've been. What do you mean, wow, you had your calculator. Yeah, actually, I saw you with an abacus earlier today. <laughs> yeah, all right. The uh, we've been locked into the playoffs. Who are we? Me. Me, myself, you're, and you're, I. You're big I'm the one-man yeah. show, the okay? One, you ever watch a wrestler with a one-man gang? No, I have not. He was, uh, no, this was back in the 80s. No. Tough-looking dude. He was like from a biker gang, but he was a one-man gang. If it wasn't Bruno San Martino you know the gang? or George the Animal Steel, that's, that's it for me back in the day. You, were, you had a picture of the fabulous moolah on your, <laughs> on your bedroom wall. Come on. No. <laughs> you know the fabulous moolah? Yeah. Damn. All right, guys, tell me All right, that. Well, the playoffs so far, we've given three video picks so far. Two of them have been best bets. We're 3-0 and in the playoffs. And what's been so impressive is not only we've been winning these games, we've been absolutely crushing the number. 59 and a half points combined, the three plays cut over the spread. I mean... It's, I, your Laker pick was right on, and I was actually on Fox uh, here in Vegas on Sportsbook Radio is the name of the show, and a friend of pregame, Michael Roberts, was hosting, and I actually rest, gave a recitation of your bullet points. Mm -hmm. I felt pretty smart last night. I can't uh, lie. You know, when you copy off my paper, you usually will be smart. <laughs> I was, I was so I would have been in high school. Did you graduate high school? Yes, I graduated. <laughs> Equivalency or an actual no, degree? No. Remember, I'm the guy that went through the school that had 600 in their class and you had 72 in your class. That's true, but you did graduate. Yes, with honors. Was it Honors? What right. kind of honors? Attendance? <laughs> they were honored I was there, okay? <laughs> <Huh>? You know. <laughs> you what honors? I was an honor student. You know, I'm going to ask anyone that can do it, go get on the Internet and try to, if you want to do some background research, I'm interested in this. Oh, All right, guys, your turn to continue the conversation <laughs> in the comment section. And next up, we're going to be breaking down a Saturday game, right? Saturday game. Oh, Spurs at Memphis. Talk to you then.